A couple of years ago, I started my career in product management team. My role was to provide an optimum product solution to the customer. But that isn't the only responsibility of product manager. Hi, my name is Shatadal Das. Today we will discuss about the topic product management. Today we will try to understand what it takes to be a product manager. Many industry experts believe that being product manager has less to do with the product but more to do with the people. But what are the responsibility and duties of a product manager? Let's see. Three major responsibilities are expected from a product manager. Number one, bringing the best out of team. Number two, dealing with ambiguity. Number three, working with the team that is not directly incentivized by you. But what would the product manager exactly do in that? When one says bringing the best out of the team, some actions that product manager can do are One of the most common ways teams miss the mark is because of complex directions or poorly outlined instructions. Issuing proper project guidelines will ensure high quality production, therefore meeting your expectations. Members of a team will be more receptive to the tasks they are given if their manager encourages them through leading by example. Instead of looking for defects in the team, build up their confidence by acknowledging their efforts. Showing appreciation for the work ethics and professional integrity of your team will make them feel empowered. They will continue to produce high quality work and will pursue rewarded efforts. It is important to outline achievable goals for future development in order to give employees something to strive for. Managers should establish the path to success and guide the team through it. The results produced will be palpable. Often, when the teams are formed, the individuals with the most confidence will lead the group. This situation may not always yield the best results. Instead, attempt to identify the strengths of each individual on the team, leverage their talent to yield the best in the team. While dealing with ambiguity, the product manager should have the ability to take action even though each and every detail may not be available upfront or even worse, the information may never come. It is certain that somewhere along the way, you will make mistakes. For this reason, it is important to take decisions based on limited information, the risk level of each outcome and expected benefit from each outcome. Ambiguous situations often have an element of uncertainty and you must be confident in your ability to make a decision and move forward. When you are confident in your ability to make a good choice, you prevent yourself from being crippled by the inability to make a decision at all. Somewhere along the line, you will make a mistake and it is important to understand that mistakes are a part of learning. Although new situations and change can be intimidating. It is essential that you are able to push past the fear and understand that taking risks is a necessary for growth. Dealing with ambiguity involves being aware of your internal self and also being aware of what is going around you. If you are in a state of panic about what the future of a situation may hold, you are incapable of being truly present. While it is beneficial to have a guideline for the future, it is crucial that you are flexible enough to adapt if you are thrown a curveball. Communication is a fundamental part of effectively dealing with ambiguity. Asking questions will help to fill the missing blocks in customer requirements. At the same time, clear communication of requirements will help the development team be aware what is expected out of them. After all, product manager is a link between the teams. Change is another element that can often bring stress to the workplace for many people. Change comes with unanswered questions and often unknown expectations. However, there is another side to change where it opens new doors, brings an opportunity to innovate and to do things differently. So it's important to embrace the change. While working with a team that is not directly incentivized by product manager can be challenging, 
or even worse can be frustrating at times to deal with such teams or individuals product manager can try the following suggestions approach colleagues with friendly questions rather than accusations any productive dialogue starts in a friendly ambience this also helps product manager to understand their colleagues perspective on the project and can also help him to clarify relevant points pertaining to him without ending in a difficult situation invite them in and show the kind of work your team is doing this helps the other team to gain a deeper understanding into the work you are doing and can also initiate an interest within them to make their contribution but along with that the product manager should also listen to the opinions of their colleagues and take a note of that show them the bigger picture explain your work as to how they are aligned with the organization goals this will generate a sense of belongingness within the other team and they will feel encouraged to contribute towards a higher cause clarify how crucial their roles are in this work it is important for every individual to see where do they fit in this big picture that will bring a sense of ownership within the team members and motivate them for the job do some team building activities to make and strengthen the bond the more you know your colleague the better will be the team dynamics our strengths and weakness areas of interest or displeasure and prime motivation helps to get the best out of team awareness of such factors will surely help product manager to manage the cross functional team but these actions are external to the self of product manager himself what does a product manager do all day the scale of work for a product manager varies with the size of the company for instance in a startup firm you might find a product manager cobbling together product mock ups scheduling check in points with contract developers and conducting informal interviews with potential users at a mid sized technology company you might find a product manager running planning meetings with a team of designers and developers negotiating product road maps with senior executives and working with their colleagues in sales and customer service to understand and prioritize user needs at a large enterprise organization you might find a product manager rewriting feature requests as user stories requesting specific data from their colleagues who work in analytics or insights and attending a whole lot of meetings in other words if you are working as a product manager you will probably find yourself doing a lot of things at different times however there are few consistent themes that unite the work of product management across job titles industries business models and company sizes you have a lot of responsibility but little authority did your designers and product development team miss their launch deadline that's your responsibility did the product you manage fail to meet its quarterly goals that is also your responsibility as a product manager you are the person who is ultimately responsible for the success or failure of your product regardless of how well you were supported by the rest of organization regardless of whether a job falls neatly into the boundaries of your written job description you are responsible for doing whatever needs to get it done to ensure the success of your team and your product if you work as a product manager at a very early stage startup you might find yourself spending most of your time doing work that feels like it has very little to do with the product management at all that's not my job is a phrase rarely uttered by successful product managers as a product manager much of your job comes down to translating between the needs perspective and skill set of your stakeholders and users you must understand their communication styles their sensitivities and the difference between what they say and what they mean thus making the connection between messy and real world people here we need to set what is and what isn't product management product manager is not the boss sometimes i heard that product manager is the ceo of the product 
but with the title as product ceo is not just a honorary title as a product manager you are responsible for the success or failure of your product but for you to meet this responsibility you are entirely dependent upon the trust and hard work of your team being the boss trust and responsibility of the team can't be earned rather product manager need to be like a servant leader support the team so the product goals can be achieved this means the product manager doesn't build the product himself rather product management evokes visions of researchers and developers working hard to bring their game changing ideas to life but if you are a person who actually building things with his own hands you might find yourself deeply frustrated by the connective and facilitative nature of product management getting into the weeds of technical and design decisions might come off as infuriating micromanagement to the people actually tasked with building the product you manage this absolutely doesn't mean that you should take zero interest in your product team's technical and design decisions taking a genuine interest in the work of your colleagues is one of the most important things you can do as a product manager support the team with the right information at right time translate the requirements effectively so that the product delivered meets or even better exceeds the customer requirement product manager has to be an active link between the teams that makes the job of product manager more challenging as he can't wait around until somebody tells him what to do larger companies like amazon and google that have a mature product management practice are more likely than other companies to have a well defined set of expectations around the product manager role but even at those companies you will have your work cut out for you figuring out what you should do who you should talk and discovering the unknown unknowns that are unique to your product and teams if clear directives aren't coming down from senior leadership then you can't sit around waiting for them to clarify it if you see something in a mock up that you think will be a problem you can't wait until somebody else catches it product manager also need to get out ahead of any disconnects in the communication or understanding that might harm your product or your team and be relentless about resolving them it is interesting to find that product manager is a person with great powers and with great powers comes great responsibilities now it is important to know what does the profile of a great product manager look like organizations like amazon expects business administration graduates with marketing background or engineering graduates with data science experience and perhaps accenture would be looking for people with finance or commerce background also there is a classic profile for a product manager which would be technical person with some business savvy or business savvy person who will not annoy the hell out of developers there are plenty of product managers who fit the job description of those large organization to certain high degree including those who cut their teeth at amazon and google don't fit into the classic profile the qualification of a person is a small part of the job requirement in the role of product manager great product managers can come from anywhere they can be from music politics theater restaurant marketing you name it generally speaking they are the people who like to solve interesting problems learn new things and work with smart people great product managers are the sum of their experiences the challenges they have faced and the people they have worked with they are constantly evolving and adapting their own practice to meet the specific needs of their current team and organization good product managers are good connectors too the expansive thinkers who are actively seeking out new perspectives such people rarely fit the traditional profile of a product manager and in many cases they are entirely non technical but these are the people who have already proven their capability 
had difficult but critical connective skills and have demonstrated the initiative to take on this kind of work without much formal recognition. Although great product managers rarely fit a single profile, bad product managers are quite consistent. Some of the features of bad product managers are the jargon jockey who would define words or statements that you haven't heard with other words and seems to use those words more and more when there are high stakes disagreement playing out. For instance, the team will be missing a critical deadline due to the quality checks and during the daily standup, the jargon jockey will be citing reference of how 7th principle of Agile Manifesto is connected to 6th pillar of TPM process and thus the current approach of the team is ineffective. Makes no sense. The Steve Jobs accolade wouldn't say that your users are stupid, at least not exactly, but they are definitely not visionaries. Such product managers like to lean back in chair and ask big provocative questions. Such person would like to remind you that people didn't knew that computers can be for personal use, or even better, people didn't knew if they wanted an iPod. Too much foresight. Hmm. The hero product manager is not particularly interested in hearing why this idea might not work or that idea has already been discussed and explored a million times. The hero product manager is here with an amazing idea that will save the whole company. But the people at this company just never seem to give the hero product manager the resources or the support he needs to deliver on all those amazing promises. Listening is an important trait required in a product manager and there is nothing like one single size fits all solution. If the product didn't launch on time or didn't meet its goals, fine, the product matter will take complete and unequivocal responsibility for screwing up everything. Again, the product matter says repeatedly that they have put this job ahead of everything else in their life and yet they seem outraged and overburdened every time someone comes to them with a new question or concern. Heavy, isn't it? The nostalgic engineer would rather be writing code than sitting in all these meetings. He is happy for the product team to work on whatever the team thinks are most fun. These traits are easy trap into which many product managers fall into. Why? Because by and large, they are not driven by malice or incompetence, but by insecurity. Product management can be a brutal and relentless trigger for insecurity. And insecurity can bring out the worst in all of us. Because product management is a connective and facilitative role, the actual value product managers bring on the table can be very difficult to quantify. Your developer wrote 10,000 lines of code. Your designer created a tactile visual universe that wowed everybody in the room. Your CEO is a visionary who led the team to success. Just what did you do? The question and the urge to defensively demonstrate value can lead to some epic acts of unintentional self-sabotage. Insecure product managers might begin to make big, awkward public displays of their contributions, like the product matter. They might speak gibberish to prove that product management is a real thing that is really complicated and important, like the jargon jockey. They might even start devaluing their own contributions to the team for the sake of showing that they could have done higher status work if they wanted, just like the nostalgic engineer. For the product managers, the value you create will be largely manifest in the work of your team. If you are starting to feel insecure about your work, talk to the team and see what you can do better contribute to their success. But don't let the insecurity turn you into a bad product manager. To summarize, the important skills of a product manager should be Communication by far the most important skill for a product manager to develop and nurture. 
If you cannot communicate effectively between your teams, your stakeholders and your users, you will not succeed as a product manager. Change the rules, don't break the rules. If a certain organization process is causing an impediment, then instead of bypassing the process or getting a deviation, modify the process the way it would help to achieve organization goals. Live in your user's reality. Critical thinking and analysis is a crucial piece of product manager's job. A product manager at a company that primarily sells physical goods might want to study and subsequently improve on the manufacturing and supply chain processes to improve product lead time, thus getting a competitive edge in the market. No work beneath, no work above. Product managers are responsible for making sure that the job gets done. It means sometimes stepping up to do whatever work is needed for your team, even if that work is not a part of your job description. Such product managers, for example, will happily go on an early morning coffee run if it is an important step towards actually getting a product out the door. While a product manager needs to have the soft skills to do the job, a minimum level of domain knowledge or industry knowledge is required to have an easy start in the job profile. One doesn't need to be a master of Bernoulli's principle or an expert in Python programming to be a product manager. But Having a basic knowledge of the systems with which you are working will soften the learning curve and give you a head start. Because product management is relatively new discipline and the role can vary so much from organization to organization, it is important that the product manager is agile and ready to adapt to the change. For making this video, my basic research is done from the book Product Management, a real-world guide to key connective role of the 21st century. So we have come to the end of this video. I hope this video was informative. Please like this video, give your valuable comments and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you.